beard in quotes anyways um we're gonna do a vod v right now this was submitted by chen daniel lee uh earlier in the stream i promised i'd do it before i switched to variety and undertale so that's what we're gonna do right now for those who are uh new to the stream what uh if you want to have your gameplay reviewed and submitted or if you want your gameplay to be reviewed uh, you have to watch the stream and earn 50,000 stream loyalty points, which you can check at the bottom of your chat box. That little uh, red Zen orb symbol. Those are called Q points. If you get 50,000 of them, I have one in stock each stream that I each day that I stream, so I can do one one review per stream, which seems to happen pretty frequently now. Every day somebody seems to redeem it. Some of y'all have been hoarding some loyalty points. But uh, that's what we do. I'll review, give you some pointers, help you get better. Let's go. And a gameplay, and then at the end, we guess the rank. So Maverick's not going to tell me what rank uh, he's at, but the chat will also watch. And we'll see uh, what level we find this at. And if you want to learn something, you know, start taking some notes. You do get more points if you are prime subbed or just subscribed in general. So, hey. I tural... Oh, God, I can't read. I tural... I... It turaled. God. It... It your old. I hope one of them is correct. Thank you for the prime sub. Much love. Thank you. Welcome to the car community. I appreciate your support here. All right, let's go. And a gameplay. All right. Sometimes you can just guess the rank based on your team comp. Marissa Hogg, not bad. Junk Soldier, okay. Mercy Anna, okay. I've seen worse. Ryan Sig seems to be pretty common. May Junk, no hit skins, except Soldier. Okay, not much to go off of on team comps anyways, but okay. So as Anna, you always play based on where your team is. If your team decides to set up here, which is odd. Well, not really that odd. Um, you can play here. Yep, this gives you cover. This gives you a healing angle, and it allows you to uh, control anybody coming out here. It gives you a heads up. If you're going to play here, you have to listen for footsteps. You can hear people walking up these steps. You can choose. To, there's like two options. You start here. Honestly, you can even start here and like jiggle peek this, make sure nobody's controlling this. Or you just play behind with the shield, but I actually don't like playing behind shield too often just because like they usually get in my way from my nades and if the shield breaks, I'm usually caught. So I'm okay with this. Three options. Sometimes when I do, when you do like gameplay reviews or when you play the game, you always have to remember there are, I wouldn't say there's like incorrect positions or incorrect spots, but there's always different opportunities and spots that could be, you know, viable as well. And that's what you always got to consider when you play Overwatch, you got to think, okay, being here isn't bad, but being here, would this position be better or would this one be better? They're all okay. Which one is a bit better? Depends on the context. Who's alive? Who's dead? When no one's dead, no one's fighting, people just poking. Hard to say. But it'll change the moment someone gets picked, you know? Okay, so your hog's going over there. You want to support him? Uh, you want to uh, go help him out here. Oh, you chucked the nade there. So if you're going to. So if your hog's gonna go in here, and you want to support him here, uh, I wouldn't cross and walk close because that'll expose you to the front. Actually, what I would have done is like taken, th like this is what I would do instinctually. It's hard to put it into words because like what I would do is normally is like I'd probably naturally gravitate three steps back and support him by standing here. And what this does is forces it, it stops these guys from getting line of sight on you. The fact that you're peeking out here around this corner. You're actually in line of sight of like May, Anna, and all that kind of stuff, right? See, this is what they see. You're all juiced up here, but see where that mercy is? That's where you might. That's what. That's where you should be standing if you want to support your your roadhog. A couple steps back, break line of sight. Movement and positioning on Anna um, is all about uh, like maneuvering between sight lines. The only way you can fully stay scoped in is if like no one can like see you, right? Without that risk. You know? Any case. Right now, it looks like they're, they're, they're a bit busy being taken undercover. Just be careful about leaning over and peeking here. Just keep supporting them. You could chuck that nade right there. I guess there was a nade opportunity right there when that Roadhog uh, got the hook off because there's two enemies there. It looks like you want somebody to stop the point. It doesn't have to be you. Don't drop. Okay, that's okay. No, don't drop. I would say... It's so scary. I only do this like sometimes. I'll do it as a mistake, but like you're still kind of doing it blind and you still want to have some semblance of control in the high ground. So the minute you went for that nade, just take a few seconds to hop here, here, 
here, come around this blue box and play from this angle. So this gives you cover from the top. It allows you to heal and it keeps you safe from like Rhine swings. Like you might not have gotten punished here. So this is what I mean by like thinking of multiple um, positions. Like this was okay in this rank or in this situation because you didn't die. But like what would have been better would have been up here instead. Get the same, you accomplish the same job. You don't give up this high ground space. You can deny people who by like putting a single shot in them if they're up alone. And they, the Rhine or whatever in Sigma can barely reach you. They won't really look at you. So you might fall down here. I think you make it out safely, which is fine, but. Punch him to death. There you go. I saw someone in your air that was critical. Uh, that's where, like, my Ana instinct would flick up and go for a quick scope. That's okay. I think uh, quick scopes will take a bit of time to learn to integrate and weave into. All right. So now that you're controlling here, there's a bit of downtime. A lot of times I do stay down here as well, but if it's if it if the payload is around here, sometimes, I mean, you watch my stream a lot, right, Chen? You'll know that sometimes, like in this situation, I might have probably walked up here and up here and held up here. This is one of my favorite spots on this map. If no one touches you here as Anna, you're golden. They're not running any snipers, right? May Junkrat, no, but you're untouchable here. Like the re sometimes I don't play up here when they have a Widowmaker. I have to make sure my team controls this area or this area, but they have nothing to kill you up here. So this is where like you'd look at the comp and be like, okay, this is a better spot. And this this spot alone actually might win you the game. Use this box as cover, peek out here or jiggle this spot here instead of staying down here, depending on how your team is playing. If they're super aggressive and pushing under, then you can play here. But if they're giving, if your team is, tends to give the space and the fights are breaking out here, you should be repositioning. And you'll see me do that a lot when I play on this map. Okay, nice. So your team is pretty aggressive here, so honestly, it's fine that you're staying here. Um, yeah, nobody has control of that high ground, so you gotta be careful. You're all on the lower. Yeah, sometimes and the other option is to like fall back on the left by server. This is fine, because your team's still holding this. But just read read what your tanks are doing. A lot of Anna's also like playing around your tanks, right? You know how like Anna is always like the homie is the Reinhardt. Your job is to also or not job, but like one of the more important things to always consider is, you know play off of what your team is doing your team is playing aggressive here okay you can chill here you can nano him to keep him alive good he looks like he's almost a little screwed here you don't have to like keep buffing him with the uh, heals he's anti i would have just taken some shots into the enemy there like right here he's getting pummeled by the enemy you like dumping heals here doesn't do anything because he's anti -ed. if you just looked up and like shot maybe one or here what this will do to the may is it'll stop her she'll be like oh shit i'm low maybe she'll ice block and suddenly you're denying her dps or you shoot this anna and suddenly she's no longer shooting the hog because she's like oh shit i just got shot maybe she'll back up a little bit or the sigma will be like ow i got hit maybe i'll put up a shield by you instead of healing this guy just putting a single shot will like stop dps coming in from the enemies and like effectively give him a better chance of living than you just pocketing the heals. Just something to consider as well, right? They, they, you meme, people meme about DPS supports a lot, but doing damage uh, against enemies is effective healing in, the, in that capacity in which you have less damage to heal if they're not doing damage to your teammates by you dealing damage to them. Widowmaker is the best healer in the game. I don't have to. You don't have to heal anybody when Widow kills everybody. Oh. <laughs> okay. So here, your team is really aggressive. They're actually rounding this corner. I would consider repositioning up to the high ground right here to the right. Oh, looks like you're doing it. Hey. There you go, your instincts. Good Overwatch game sense right there. Good stuff. Okay, be careful. Go for the sleep. Go for the sleep. Go for the sleep. I think in the moment you hear that alt, instead of like panicking and trying to go for that heal immediately, you see that Sigma in your line of sight, you just try to go for it. Oh, wait, you don't have it. Oh, I'm dumb. Never mind. It was on cooldown. I forgot you went for a random sleep earlier. Okay, ignore what I said. But if you had it, you would definitely go for it there. Okay. 
Okay. Repositioning. Okay. Support your Roadhog at this point. Let your rest of your team deal with the top. Be careful of this, uh, Brian. Play around a corner here. Kill the Mercy. She flew in front of you really low. Ah, that's okay. Okay. Go back on high ground somewhere. Either go around the left or go around to the right here. Spread out from them and try your best to heal. Okay, it's down. All right, since you, okay, so this is where you have to be careful here. This is what happens to me a lot. In the middle of the game, it's tough to tell, but like in the VOD, I'll, when I do this, I know I made a mistake. Like I'll naturally go here and then I'll look and be like, wait a minute. My Orisa and Mercy are playing here. You're technically alone and they killed Roadhog. So now you can get isolated alone because you lost. Well, I mean, you still have high ground control, but since you're alone here, you can get collapsed on. Um, I usually will come here if I have a brig with me, but since your tanks are here, this is where, again, this reposition up here would just be more optimal. Since you lost one, you have to back up. You know the team fight's going to clash around here. Just play. You got to move here, in my opinion. That's like... Not even a little better. That's probably like the best play you can make at this point. Other than pocketing this guy. You have time right now, too. Yeah, the enemy is going to push you up here. Oh, if you're on that high ground, it'd be it'd be over for him. Get out of here. Run, run. All right, good. Okay, you got to make do with what you have. And now you're exposed. Do you see how much you're like exposing yourself to by not positioning up there? You just nano this visor. All right, good. Just respond to how your enemy is doing. You don't need to keep pocketing the sleeping person here. It was kind of low. Oh, careful here. Yeah, you, you subject yourself to shatter. All that stuff. Yeah. That biggest takeaway from that was that reposition right there to that high ground. I actually single-handedly think that could have changed a huge tide of that fight. One HP in a dream. Boom. Uh, mechanics seem okay. So, so we talked a bit about positioning. Um, this guy needs to get out. Come around this corner. Just keep pocketing him. Why is this guy not rounding the corner? I know we have to guess the rank after. All right. What that Arisa is doing is telling me this is uh, this is below plat, I think. That Ryan is just standing still there. Oh goodness. We're waiting for the tire. Right, you guys have some kills. Uh, reloading around the corner. Be careful of the shatter. I know you're like, you don't. There's you don't have to move um, where you're going here because you're like walking in front of the Ryan. You have a Roadhog and no shield. This will just expose you to shatter. My instinct, my Anna instinct when I come around here, if I see that Ryan walking right here, it smells like he has a shatter and he's about to go for it. You just, you just learn to read body language with game sense as you like play this game a lot, and that like, you know. It smells like he's gonna do something funky or oh he doesn't even have shatter but like in my games if he was doing that he would definitely have shatter this is just this ryan just being weird just walking up with no shield but i still think you should like train yourself and prime yourself to like expect something like that and you would playing here would accomplish the same thing as doing this but minimize your risk because you get this giant forklift to block your right line of sight and you can back up behind it if they decide to shoot you Cause like your hog, I know you get an angle on your hog here, but like even if you're playing here, you can still have an angle on your hog. So regardless if you have shatter or not, uh, and you have no shield, you should stay, stay around this forklift. A lot of positioning stuff I can point out right now. Like right now, like you're moving forward to heal the hog. Oh, now you're caught in the may alt. Oh, oh wait, you made it out. Oh, you see what I mean? That wouldn't have been as scary if you were already in that forklift spot to begin with. So here, I'll sh show you one of my one of my go-to spots when when a fight is around here. I just jump on this box right here, eep, eep, like right here, beep, beep, and then you stand like this. You're, it's accomplishing basically what you're doing here, except like this payload's kind of blocking your sight line. But if you're up here, you get to heal your team, and like half your body is cut off and blocked. Obviously, your head is still exposed, but at least like half your body is covered. 
and it can give you like instantaneously if someone's looking at you you can just drop down and suddenly you're in cover when you're here you'd have to like come all the way to the left and then like if you wanted to help again and they're around this corner you can't but if you pop down here then you can just pop to the right or pop to the left something to consider like it's you're here it's it's like it's too late and it's it's like okay but like like that would be a better spot that makes sense right dun 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 shit wrong button so like right. consider nanoing somebody here to keep him alive nah it's a roadhog and a rissa you're good right. uh it's really tough like against valking mercies you can try putting one or two shots on her, but like since she heals uh, passively with the regen, I think you need to land like six or seven straight shots on a on a Valking Mercy. Like maybe one shot to stop her, but like I wouldn't focus too much time there. I would have just stayed pocketing um, your teammates. Maybe like threaten her with one or two shots so she stops pistoling you. But like I think you, you shot like four times at her, which probably wouldn't be a thing. I mean, I, I mean to be fair, there's not much you can shoot right now because your team is fairly healthy. Honestly, that's fine. Okay, nice shot there. Visor, look up, look up. Visor, Nano. Last fight, 20 seconds. You're tunneling. There's a Rhyme there too. Or sorry, there's a Roadhog really low. Okay. At this point... So at this point, like, the fight's over. This is something to, like, work on a little bit later. When you have a clear advantage... Like this, suddenly healing becomes less important than just like securing the final kills. So like, you're up like what, six v three at this point. This hog is like pretty much full health. This is where like you don't have to like sit here and just like uh, tunnel pocket him. I would just turn to the left here and just look for anti nades and kill the rest of these guys. Obviously, time's winding down. They're gonna lose anyways, but like instinctually, you work on these Anna instincts like. In general team fight situations when you have the advantage like if someone's at like 500 hp it's more important to like fully uh, eliminate the people like these guys when they're at a numbers disadvantage you know their positioning is going to be like backing up and kiting and this is where you take advantage of the fact that they're not gonna take any they're they're you're gonna keep taking space by moving forward and they're gonna keep running away so you just like add fuel to the fire keep pressuring them talking the hog accomplishes less because he's already taking this space, they're already running from him, then, like, unless he's low, then just, like, compiling the damage. Because you have all your cooldowns right now. Okay. Okay. Um, so the, the biggest takeaways from uh, this gameplay is definitely uh, making use of Anna's strengths, which is being a sniper, sniping healer. So there's a lot of times in the first point and here where I think the positioning um, could have been a bit uh, a bit more optimal. Like you still won the round pretty decently, but um, just just to, like instead of giving like a one, I gave you a couple of examples here, but you have to like take away these points and like apply them to all of the other maps. So you have to always consider your sight lines and if you have immediate cover, because like the reason why you die a lot or in general a lot of Anna players die is because like no matter how good your mechanics are like the moment like some teammate doesn't have the space anymore like it compromises you like you play behind the shield the shield breaks you're dead so that's why I like thinking about spots and and moving to where um you're able to contribute to the fight it accomplishes the same job as if you were playing closer but gives you the benefit of the cover so like example was here an example was here uh, earlier you saw the a couple of examples were like coming around this corner hiding corners repositioning to high ground understanding the threats uh, long range threats you're a sniper right and you have high ground staying away from Rhine swings by being up here will allow you to do that you're able to shoot you're a sniper um, so doing all those and just like it, especially during downtime it's t maybe it's tough like when things are flying and it's like tough to make those decisions uh, in the moment, but like think about it during downtime. Like when you you guys convincingly win a fight, think, okay, do they have a sniper to counter me? No. Uh, they have Junkrat May. Can I play up here? Would it be better here? Um, then when you put those thoughts into your head, um, it'll help you uh, make 
a few more optimal decisions in the following games. Mechanically, I didn't see too many quick scopes. It feels like you kind of know how to do them, but you don't do them. There's opportunities. There's like, I didn't pick too much on mechanics because those will come with time, but consider like more interplay between all three styles. I definitely saw you do a lot more unscope shots. You're definitely unscope shot heavy, which is okay because you have these thick tanks in front of you. But like the, you didn't actually sit scope too long because sitting scope puts you at risk, right? You're so you're stationary and you don't really move, but it is better accuracy. Um, but you have to consider like, so when is the best time to do it? Well, it's times if you're if you're gonna be like if you if you're very immobile when you're scoped in, um, you can get punished easily. But how do you minimize punishing? Well, starting off with that step number one, which is finding a more optimal position where you can pop into cover. So that's why I'd be here. I can stay scoped in. Over here, I could have stayed scoped in and used that improved accuracy without being threatened because I'm undercover. But sometimes you, you know, earlier, like you'd pop out here and try to accomplish the same thing, uh, but you'd shoot unscoped shots because you're a bit closer. Um, and sometimes those are easier to, there's a higher chance of missing. Um, is there anything else? So, like, work on uh, working in the quick scopes and probably more scoped in stuff into your, your gameplay. Uh, what else can I say? What else did I mention earlier? Yeah, I think that was pretty good. Yeah, biggest thing was positioning, and then that kind of le bleeds into allowing you to stay scoped in more often because you're in a better position to begin with because you're less at risk. That's the biggest takeaway here. Okay, hope that was helpful, Chen. Um, everybody else, what rank do you think this gameplay is at? that's how we do it we kind of guess the sr now and for those who are watching intensely i hope you guys uh learned a little bit gold everybody's saying gold silver gold some plats <clears throat> i would say most I think most people said gold. All right, what rank was this gameplay, Jen? Y'all too kind. I am what you would call a filthy bronze casual at 1350 SR. Wow, look, look, chat was giving you the gold praise. Like you have potential, like mechanically, this is better than most bronze players. You could, I could tell, right? You could definitely climb 500 SR to like 1800, 17, 1800, at least. You, honestly, you, would hit, you can hit gold. I love how everyone's like, what? This was bronze. Bronze gameplay. Interesting. You know, I, I actually thought that was pretty good. I would have said gold, to be honest with you. That was good. Like, you've got the fundamentals to definitely hit gold. And that's like a big accomplishment in itself, right? That's like 700 SR increase. 1350, 700 SR will sit you into just a little bit over gold. All right, update me in uh, one month. If in one month you don't gain 700 SR, I'll refund your points off of that. Just as long as you apply those positioning tips and work in those scopes, I'm sure you're going to add a lot more value to your team. These are actually kind of cool. These VOD reviews are really nice because um, a lot of people who have done these before, they always come back in the chat. They're like two weeks later. They're like, yo, I gained like 300 SR, bro. I'm like, oh my God, good shit. Sometimes it takes that third person, which is me, third person party to watch your gameplay to be like, all right, this, clean this up, clean this up, and boom. All right, good stuff. For those who uh, also want to submit their gameplay one day, someday, make sure you... Just keep tuning into the stream, collect those Q points, 50,000 points to get your uh, VOD reviewed.